Now I've read a ton of books over the years and there are four that are extremely helpful when it comes to picking your dream career and figuring out what the heck to do with your life. And these four books not only helped me choose a career, but it also helped me choose my life purpose in general. And not only will these books help you to figure out your life purpose, but they're also gonna lead to more freedom in life, control over what you spend your time doing and better relationships as well. And at the end, I'm also gonna give a bonus book recommendation that's going to be tailored to your specific situation, right? the type of career you want to go into or what you want to study. So without further ado, let's get right into it with number four on the list, which is what color is your parachute? Now, by the way, I am going to go from the least helpful to the most helpful, but that doesn't mean that this one isn't helpful. It's still a great book. So this book is all about identifying what career you should go into and also how to land that career. And one thing that I really like about this book is it emphasizes the importance of creativity in the modern job market. And this is especially important in the age of AI where repetitive tasks that don't require that much creativity are being automated. Now, the thing that this book is really well known for is using what's known as the flower exercise. And basically each petal on the flower is going to be something important that you should keep in mind when it comes to choosing your career. And where all of the flowers intersect is going to be something that's probably going to be good for you. Now, what I kind of don't like about this book is it's a little bit too woo-woo. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some things that I like that are woo-woo. For instance, I believe in the law of attraction. That's pretty woo-woo. But for the most part, I like books that have action advice that are also practical. And that's why this one comes in as number four on the list. So where I think this one is really good is if you maybe come from like an upper middle class or kind of like an upper class background and you sort of don't have to worry about money in life and you're kind of more concerned with finding your life purpose and all of that sort of thing. Or maybe you're somebody who's kind of midway through their career. You've already got your money situation figured out and you want to optimize your lifestyle and choose a career that's going to be even better for you and make you happier. Because the truth is, some things in life are a little bit woo woo and these types of books really do help with that. Now, the next one on the list is probably going to surprise you. Number three is going to be the four hour work week. And I, of course, have this on my Kindle. And you might be thinking the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss. Isn't that a book about starting a business? It's all about working four hours a week and making a full time income. Why the heck is this on the video? Are you about to try to pitch me some kind of business course? Because you know, I don't have enough money for that. And even if I did, I'd probably just spend it on my NFT girlfriend. Now with all joking aside, yes, most of the four hour work week is about starting a freedom business. And yes, I also realized that the title, the four hour work week is probably one of the biggest clickbait titles of all time. But that doesn't change the fact that this is a phenomenal book. And something that a lot of people overlook is in the first few chapters, Tim Ferriss actually recommends getting a remote job. The whole goal of getting a remote job is creating a location independent lifestyle. And Tim Ferriss basically says, here, hey, starting a business is kind of hard and you can get a lot of the benefits of starting a business by simply getting a fully remote job where you have that location independence. And there is a ton of advantages to having a remote job. For one, you can move to a country that has very low cost of living. And even if you're only making two to $3,000 a month, you can live like a king in a country like the Philippines or Thailand. And on top of that, it's much easier for you to network. So for instance, if a big business opportunity comes up from your friend who lives in New York or Austin, you're able to actually actually travel to them and take advantage of that. Whereas if you worked in a normal job where you had to stay in a specific location, you wouldn't be able to do that. So this is something that I think a lot of people gloss over in the book. And honestly, I think it's a great place to start even if you plan on starting a business down the line. Now, I would personally also argue that you want to find a job where you get paid to learn in demand skills. So yeah, overall, great book worth a read for anybody out there. This is one of the books where when you ask entrepreneurs that have been successful, especially in the last 10 to 20 years, over and over again, they will suggest the four hour work week. Now, the next one on the list is also in my Kindle, and that is going to be Ikigai. And yes, I know I am probably pronouncing that incorrectly. I'm sorry. I'm a caveman and I do not know how to pronounce Japanese words correctly. But Ikigai basically means a reason for being. Now, this probably sounds sounds a little bit woo woo as well. And there is a little bit of woo woo in this book, I'm not gonna lie. But I also think it's a lot more practical. And one thing
one thing that I really like about this book is it emphasizes the fact that you should try to help other people. You know, one thing that I really like about Eastern philosophy and that's a little bit different than Western philosophy is this sense of community. You know, the West really glorifies sort of being kind of self-centered, a little bit narcissistic, and just kind of looking out for yourself. And there's a lot of great things that come from this. There's a lot of entrepreneurship and a lot of innovation that comes out of this way of thinking. But I also think that taking this too far can lead to a meaningless type of existence where you're basically just videos on TikTok to try to get a little bit of attention. And Ikigai basically can be summarized with this infographic. And it's kind of a simplified version of the flower method that they talk about in What Color Is Your Parachute? And basically it's what you love, what you're good at, what you can be paid for, and what the world needs. And the intersection of those four circles is your Ikigai. Now, another thing that I really like about this book is it emphasizes finding harmony and meaning in day-to-day -day simple practices. So basically, even if you're doing a very simple job, like let's say you're a gardener or something along those lines, you can learn to really enjoy what you do. And you can also learn to be the best at what you do as well. And this is very common in Western countries where people absolutely hate their jobs. And there's a lot of reasons for this that I'm not gonna get into in the video. And I kind of agree with many of the reasons, but I think on a personal level, it's more productive to try to enjoy whatever you do, even if it's extremely repetitive and boring. And also try to be the best at what you do as well. Because studies have shown that being good at what you do actually leads to you being more passionate about it as well. So yeah, Ikigai, great book, definitely worth a read. And coming in at number one on the list is the book So Good They Can't Ignore You by Cal Newport. Cal Newport is honestly one of the goats of the self-help industry. This guy has written so many amazing books. I remember the first book I read by Cal Newport was when I was in high school, and I believe it was called How to Become a Straight A Student. And that's when I started taking my studies really seriously. And I went from being a terrible student, I think I had like a 2.3 GPA or something like that, to getting straight A's the rest of high school. So it was an incredible book. And then when I went to university, I read the book How to Win at College. Also an incredible book and it taught me organization techniques that I still use to this day. So for instance, in the book, he recommends just planning out your next day on a flashcard, right? Literally just take it hour by hour and plan out your next day on a flashcard. And that's something that I have literally been doing since my first year of college and I still do it to this day. And I learned that from Cal Newport's books. He's also written some really good books like Deep Work and Digital Minimalism, which I highly recommend as well. But for this video, So Good They Can't Ignore You is a phenomenal phenomenal book. And I swear Cal Newport basically like reads my brain because before I read this book, I thought a lot of the things that he says in this book, but I couldn't quite put it into words. So for instance, I always knew that this whole follow your passion thing was a bunch of BS. I came up from a poor background and I knew that I had to make practical decisions in order to make money and get myself out of that situation. And if I had just followed my passion, I never would have escaped. Now that doesn't mean you should totally ignore your passion by any means. That's something that you should keep in mind, but there are other things that are even more important. And instead of following your passion, what Cal Newport recommends is developing what's known as a craftsman mindset. And this is basically where you focus on developing valuable skills. And by developing valuable skills, you get this thing that's known as career capital. And the more career capital you have, the more control you're going to have over how much money you make, what types of jobs you get and your overall freedom and autonomy. And he also goes into the fact that people actually report higher job satisfaction when they have more freedom and autonomy. And he goes over research in the book where it kind of shows that people who go for their passion, you know, follow their passion, a lot of the time will end up miserable with their job. And in many cases, you should be keeping your passions as either a hobby or something that you start a business with. And honestly, there's a lot more to this book and I'd have to make like an entire video or maybe even a video series on it because it's really a great book and I highly, highly recommend that you read it. If there's only one book on this list that you read, it's gotta be this one. Now, by the way, if you're extremely confused about what career path you are choosing, I'm actually going to be doing a live three-day challenge this weekend. I believe it's going to start tonight. And I will put that in the description as well as the pinned comment below. Now, I will actually be presenting live over Zoom, helping you to find your dream career. And then at the end of the presentation, I will be taking questions. And this is going to be a three-day event. So yeah, definitely go ahead, sign up for that below. I am charging for it, but I made sure that it's very affordable. Now, I did say that I'm going to give you an extra book recommendation based on the specific career you're trying to go into. And basically, what I recommend doing is look 
look up the career you're trying to go into on Amazon, right? Look it up on the Amazon bookstore as well as Kindle, and then find the highest rated books on that subject. And then go ahead and maybe order the top one, two, or three books that you see. And then you can read them and it'll probably give you a lot of insights. This is something I did when I started my pharmacy career. I ordered all the top books on pharmacy and it was extremely helpful. So yeah, I hope to see you at the three day challenge that'll help you find your dream career. I'll put that down in the description as well as the pinned comment below. And also check this video out, which is the seven remote jobs that are always hiring by clicking right here.